Finding extreme values on an interval using calculus. Well, first of all, let's talk about the definition of extrema. And extrema is just the plural word for extreme values. So we've got a function f, and it's going to be defined on an interval from a to b. So here's my a coordinate on my x-axis, and here's my b coordinate. So we say that f of c is the minimum of f on the interval from a to b. And notice it's a closed interval. If the y value when x equals c is less than or equal to any y value for all x in a to b. OK? f of c is the maximum of f on the closed interval a to b if the y value when x equals c is greater than or equal to all the y values for all the x's in a to b. All right, so what does that mean? Well, let's check out right here. That's f of a, right? And then let's say that I just happen to pick a c value here. There's my f of c. And let's do um, f of b right here. OK. And I can do an f of d right here. And as you can see, that for any x value between a and b, I can get a corresponding y value here. And we say that f of c is the maximum because it seems to be greater than all the other y values we get no matter what x we put in. And it looks like f of a is going to be the minimum because it seems to be less than all the y values we would get as we put in various x values going from a to b. So there's our min and there's our max. Now, the minimum and maximum values of a function on an interval are called extreme values or extrema. And on the closed interval, they're the absolute minimum and absolute maximum. So because we started counting at a and stopped counting at b, that's an absolute min and that's an absolute max. On an open interval, they're called relative extrema or relative minimum and relative maximum. So you'll notice that if I let my interval start, say, right there and stop right there, then f of d would be a relative minimum. It's, relatively speaking, within this range right here, f of d is our relative min. It's not the absolute min, because f of a is lower, but it is a minimum. All right. So the question is, how do I know what points to test for c? Well, you'll notice that at a maximum there, my slope of a tangent line is 0. And the derivative gives us a slope of the tangent line. So we're going to take the derivative and set it equal to 0. And it'll give us anywhere there's a maximum like that or anywhere there's a minimum like that. Also, right here, this is a cusp. And the derivative does not exist right there. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the derivative of the function, setting it equal to 0, solving for x, and fi finding out if it doesn't exist anywhere in the interval. And those places where it's equal to 0 or it doesn't exist are called critical numbers. All right, so on this problem, let's find the critical numbers. I'm going to distribute the x squared. I'm going to take the derivative using the power rule. And I'm going to set it equal to 0. Notice that this is a polynomial. We're not going to get any values where the derivative does not exist. So we don't have to worry about cusps or anything like that. But we will be able to solve for x when the derivative is equal to 0. I'm going to divide everything by 4. Well, let me erase that, write it more clearly. And I'm going to factor out an x. I don't want to divide by x, because that would lose one of my critical points. 
So it looks like we're going to have three critical points. We're going to have a point at x equals 0 from that factor, and plus or minus the square root of 2 when I factor that out. OK, so we have three critical numbers, x equals 0, x equals positive root 2, and x equals negative root 2. OK, so what are the steps involved in finding an extrema on a closed interval? Number one, determine the critical numbers, like we just did. Take the derivative, set it equal to 0, see where it is equal to 0 and where it doesn't exist. Evaluate the critical numbers. In other words, plug them back into the original function the f function, not the derivative, but the original function. Don't forget to evaluate the end points of the interval, because this is a closed interval, so we need to include the beginning and end of the interval. After you've done that, you're just going to compare y values. And the least y value is the absolute minimum. The greatest y value is the absolute maximum. So that's it. Those are the four steps on how to find extreme on a closed interval. Let's do one more example. We're going to locate the ex absolute extrema on the closed interval of this function, f of x equals x to the 5 thirds power plus 5x to the 2 thirds power over this interval. You know what? I've changed my mind. I would like to do this from negative 3 to 1, because that's just going to make our lives easier. All right, so f prime of x is 5 thirds x to the 2 thirds plus 10 thirds x to the negative 1 third, which is equal to 5x to the 2 thirds over 3 plus 10 over 5x to the 1 third. Now, let's get a common denominator. So that's going to equal, I'm going to need to multiply the top and bottom of this first expression by x to the 1 third. That'll give me 5x to the 1, because 1 third plus 2 thirds is 1 third, is 1, plus 10, that's already got our common denominator, all over, whoop. I just made a mistake, didn't I? That should be a 3. 10 thirds, yeah, there we go. Over 3x to the 1 third. So to locate our critical numbers, we're going to set that equal to 0. All right, so what's going to make the derivative equal to 0? Whatever values of x make the numerator equal to 0, that means we have a critical number at negative 2. Are there any places where the derivative is undefined? Yep. We can't let x equal 0. So I have two critical numbers, negative 2 and 0. I also have to check my endpoints. Those are critical numbers as well. So we have done step 2, step 1. Now we're going to do step 2. I'll do a little table. And let's list our critical numbers. So my end point is negative 3. Then I want to test negative 2. I want to test 0. And my final end point is 1. OK, now remember, we're doing this into f of x, not f prime of x. OK, so this is going to be negative 3 to the 5 thirds power plus 5 times negative 3 to the 2 thirds power. Let's get our calculator in here. And I'll turn it on. And that's going to be parentheses negative 3 raised parentheses to the 5 thirds power plus 5 parentheses, negative 3, parentheses, raised parentheses to the 2 thirds power. And we get out 4.16. 
Okay, let's put in negative 2. And rather than enter in that whole thing again, I'm just going to go second entry. And if there's a negative 3, I'm going to replace it with a negative 2. So I hit my back arrow here until I hit negative 2, hit enter, 4.76. OK. So that's greater than f of negative 3. Let's plug in 0. Well, obviously, if I plug in 0 there and there, I'm going to get out 0. And finally, let's plug in 1. Well, that's going to be 1 to the 5 thirds, which is 1 plus 5 times 1 to the 5 thirds, which is 5, and I get out 6. So I have four y values to compare. I've got 4.16, 4.76, 0, and 6. And this one right here, f of 0, is our absolute min. And Six is our absolute max. And you can see this is a relative max because we start at 4.16, we go up to 4.76, and we go back to zero. That's a relative max, but six is bigger than that, so it's the absolute max. And that's pretty much it for locating extrema on an interval.